Hello my dear students, I am Dr. Abhijit Mujumdar working as professor and director of uh, Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute Greater Noida. Uh, we are here to discuss about uh, what we are meaning by retailing and medical equipment exhibitions. Just a sort of recapitulation what we have studied in the just 3, 4, 5 classes at the back where uh, we have discussed about the various ways to promote our product, whether it is in the terms of sales promotion or it is in the form of advertisement or it is in the form of uh, you know personal selling. These are the various ways by which we promote the sales. See, these are very, very important if you join your career in marketing management. In fact, that is the major objective for which we are studying this particular subject of pharmaceutical marketing management in your BPharm course. Next we are uh, now to in this class today, primarily we will be focusing ourselves on the pharmaceutical sector, what retailing, what wholesaling we mean, what are the various types of trade fair which we organize, what are the benefits. Now uh, let us first define what retailing means. What do you mean by the term retailing? Now the term retailing basically means all those activities which are related to the sales of your goods and service. The term retailing basically means that all the activities which we carry out to promote the sales of goods and service to the final customers either for their own personal use or for their non-personal use. So, retailers retailing on the mainly includes all activities which are directly related to the sales of goods and services to the ultimate consumers for the purpose of personal or non-personal uses. Now define retailing. You have heard the name Philip Scotler, a legendary name in the field of marketing. All of you have studied his books also. So, according to Philip Scotler, retailing is defined as or it includes rather all the activities involved in the selling of goods and services directly to the final customers, either for personal or any non business issues. Every sale of goods and services to the final customers, whether it is a food product or it is a movie or it is an any apparel, all includes under the domain of retailing. Now, let us see what is the origin from where this term of retailing comes into picture. This is basically a very old French word called tailor. The term retailing, tailing, it comes way back from a French word which we are calling as the tailor. What does tailor means? Tailor means, what does a tailor do? You cut off pair and divide in this is this is a terminology which started way back in 1365. It was first recorded as a noun with the meaning of sales in small quantities in 1433, but gradually there has been a gradual change evaluation I mean evolution in the process. Retailing may now be understood as the final step in the distribution of merchandise for the purpose of consumption by the end users. Retailing may be understood as the final step in the distribution of merchandise for consumption by the end users. Retailers attempt to satisfy the objective is, here is the objective. The retailers attempt to satisfy the consumer needs by having the right merchandise 
at the right place at the right place when the consumers actually requires the product. I am repeating this again. Retailers attempt to satisfy the needs of the customers by having the right merchandise that is the right item at a right place at a right price and at a right time. Right time means at the right time when the customer requires the product. This is what we are meaning by the term retailing. So, the final objective is you have to deliver the right product at the right place at the right time and at a right price. The concept of retailing basically it has four broad concept. First, it is as per the discussion which we have uh, conducted till now, you have I hope you have understood that it is a customer oriented or a customer centered approach. The entire focus is on the customer, so this is the customer all the activities all the things are targeted to the customers. It is a customer centered approach, a chain wide approach to strategy development and implementation, a value driven process with a very clear goals. I have under made you clear what goals are. So, retailing is a customer oriented approach, a chain wide approach for strategy development and implementation of the marketing aspects. It is a value driven process with a clear goals. Together these four principles form what we are calling as the retailing concept. So, it has two things one it is the customer orientation two it is a coordinated effort. So, the two approaches are one is it is having a customer orientation to it is a coordinated approach. Customer orientation the retailer determines the attributes and needs of its customers and endeavors to satisfy these needs to the fullest extent. The one who is a retailer he has to determine what are the attributes of the product, what are the requirements of the product, what are the needs of the product the needs of the customers and endeavor to satisfy these needs. The customer needs are to be satisfied. This is the foremost requirement of retailing. On the uh, same side, it is a coordinated effort. What do you mean by coordinated effort? The retailer integrates all plans and activities to maximize the eff efficiency the retailers they integrates all the plans and activities to maximize the efficacy or efficiency. Next is as I have told you earlier that it is value driven as well as it is goal oriented. Let us see what do we mean by the term value driven, what do we mean by the term goal oriented. Value driven means the retailers offers a good value to the customers whether it be upscale or it is in the form of a discount. You should provide the retailers provide a good value to the customer this is a very very important. The retailers offers a good value to the customers whether it should be in upscale or it should be in a discount. What does it mean? It means that they are having a price appropriate for the level of the product as well as for the level of the customer service. Depending on what category of product it is, what category of customer service is expected or it is provided rather the it is the value driven technique. Next is goal orientation. The retailer says the set up the goal and then uses various strategies to achieve that goal. Therefore, retailing has four aspects, 
first of all it is consumer oriented, second it is a coordinated effort, sorry it is a value driven process <coughs> and four is it is oriented towards a goal. So, these are the four basic concepts of what we are calling as retailing. Next, what are the characteristics? The characteristics are it offers a direct interaction, it offers a direct interaction. Two, sales volume is comparatively large in quantities. If the retailing is proper, automatically there is an increase in the volume of sales. Third, customer service. If you are doing the retailing property, if you are doing carrying out the retailing aspect properly, automatically the customer satisfaction will be more, you will be in a position to give them better service. Sales promotion are offered at this point only. Retailing takes place in various forms, location and layout of the retail outlet are two very important features, two very crucial factors. Location where it is, where the retailing, I mean the retailers outlet is located and what is the layout of the retailing outlet. Lastly, it produces more employment opportunities. Now, let us see, let us study this retailing as far as the current Indian scenario is concerned. That is, let us see what is the Indian scenario of this retailing. The Indian retail sector is very highly fragmented with more than 90 percent of its business being carried out by traditional family run small stores. This retailing, it has been seen that majority of the family run shows, they are carrying out this retailing very effectively. In the Indian context, total 7 percent of the population engage in the retailing trade, just to see the scenario only 7 percent of the population, they are engaged in the retailing trade and in those 7 percent even, 10 percent are engaged by organized sector, organized retailing sector and remaining 90 percent are belonging to the family or the unorganized retailing. A lot of area remains to be explored, a lot needs to be developed. See, if the retailing is proper, automatically the customer satisfaction will be good. Customer satisfaction good is, means the frequency of purchase of your product will be good. Automatically more will be the sales volume on, more will be the profitability obtained. So, in the current Indian context, this lot of work, lot of scopes are there for improvement in the field of retailing, because only 7 percent of the population is engaged in the retailing trade and out of this 7 percent even, if you break the 7 percent into different parts, you will see that only 10 percent population are engaged in organized retailing, whereas 90 percent population are engaged in the unorganized retailing. I will be showing what organized and unorganized retailing basically means. Organized retailing means the customers are mainly from modern retailing with various busy shopping mall, multi-storied mall and huge complexes that offers a large variety of products in terms of quality, in terms of value of the money and makes shopping a very memorable experience. 
you have seen that nowadays if we look at the last 10 15 years down the line there has been a significant increase in this organized retailing shopping malls are developed shopping complexes are developed multi storied buildings are coming up where under a common umbrella you will get a large number of brands of the same item. The customers get an opportunity to have a hand on experience. They are in a position to see in front of their eyes. They are in a position to see the package. They are in a position to see their quality and go for selection of a particular item. So, Organized retailing comprises mainly of modern retailing with busy shopping malls, multi-storied malls and huge complexes that offers a large variety of products in terms of quality, value for money and makes the shopping a very memorable experience. Next, we are coming on to the unorganized retailing sector. In fact, this is the major chunk, this is the major volume of what we see in India today. What, what is unorganized? Unorganized retailing or traditional ones are normally which we see across in the street, in the small market, in the counter or the vendors where the ownership lies on one individual. This is the first major foremost difference between an organized and an unorganized retailing. In unorganized one, it, it lies on an individual, whereas in organized one, it is a group of collective people or in the shopping malls. The driving forces of pharmaceutical retailing includes the e-commerce, the stores, marketing information technology mobile and social generation of the shoppers economy and coupons these are the common driving force of pharmaceutical sectors the functions of retailers what are the functions of retailers number one buying and assembling of the product keeping the product in a warehouse which we are calling as a warehousing selling of the product to the customers or the end users it may be, it, I mean, it is basically for the patients rather. Grading and packing, financing, and lastly, advertising. So, these are the major six functions which a retailer does. I am repeating once again buying and assembling, warehousing or storing. Selling grading and packaging, financing, advertisement. These are some of the salient features which a retailer does. That is functions of the retailers. Now, the service of the retailers can be of two categories. One, which it provides to the customers or the consumers and two, which it provides to the wholesalers and the manufacturers. Let us deal one by one. Now, whenever we are talking the service of the retailers to the manufacturers or the wholesalers, in fact, it is a very big up relief for the manufacturers or the retailers because or for the wholesalers because it is not always possible for the wholesalers to store such a huge amount of item in a particular space. Scarcity of space is solved, is resolved when they are dividing it amongst the retailers. As we know that in pharmaceutical sector, it is produced by the manufacturers. The manufacturers then hand over the item to the wholesalers. The wholesalers then distribute the items to various retailers who are located in various areas. Therefore, it offers a great opportunity for them, for the manufacturer, so that it helps them, it helps the manufacturer to reach the final end users very effectively. 
at a much lower cost. It helps the wholesalers to distribute the item to the various retailers. Provision of information keeping is another advantage, but the only disadvantage is advantage is reduce the risk of loss. Now, let us see what are the advantages it produces or what are the advantages the customers or the consumers get. The consumers get the largest choice, he or she has an opportunity to select this brand, which toothpaste you will use, which toothpaste you will use, which brand toothpaste you will use. He can see all the brands which are available, he can see uh, Colgate, he can see Palmolive, he can see Dabur, he can see the Patanjali, that every brand he can see the one which best suits him, he can select. So, it provides the customer with a very unique advantage of having the largest choice. The, as because it is easily available, so no need to stock up in his house. So, relief from storage, extra service is provided by the retailers in the form of counselling, in the form of providing certain incentives, discounts they are getting full complete information of their product from the retailers. Next, we are moving on to medical equipment exhibitions. Now, this medical equipment exhibitions, let us see what are the purpose to inculcate in the mind of the students the educational need to have an inquiry approach rather than a mere storehouse of information. This helps the to solve the inquisitiveness which exists in the mind of the students, medical exhibition. It helps to achieve specialized knowledge among the students and aim to consider learning as an adventure through exhibition, whenever they are coming. Say for example, our students of pharmacy, they are going to various medical exhibition to see how a tablet machines are operating. Last two years, Indian Phar Pharmaceutical Congress could not be organized, but in the earlier days, the students used to visit this IPC to see, or they have ha they are having an opportunity to meet with the big pharma houses, where they are seeing various instruments, various machineries, how they operate. So, it helps to achieve the specialized knowledge among the students and aims to consider learning as an adventure by the process of exhibition. The other objectives of medical exhibition includes it helps the student to develop the abilities of imagination and it provides an exposure opportunity for them being trained to focus on facts and figures in a manner that will attract the attention of the viewers. It helps to reveal the ideas very clearly as well as effectively. It stimulates a development of team spirit among the students. When the students are going in a group, it develops a team spirit. It helps to promote an understanding and finally, it helps to summarize the activities that have completed and emphasize their meaning. It also helps or influence people to adopt better practice by arousing interest and stimulating thought and getting action. Medical exhibition gives recognition to the people or institutions by enabling them to display their products. It helps to create a market for certain types of commodities. It helps to acquaint the public with better standards by teaching the facts, which is the reality of the day. It helps to promote participation in or to raise money for some public cause of activities. It involves a large range of products from a number of different industries for display to the general public or the customers. This is the major objective of this medical exhibition. Generally intended to meet the need of one particular type of business, to reveal the ideas very clearly effectively and in, in a very lucid way, the ideas are exposed, they are revealed. It helps to develop or promote understanding and finally, 
the, the objective of medical exhibition is to influence people to adopt the better practice by arousing interest and stimulating through and getting them action. How to plan a medical exhibition? First of all, you have to develop a plan or a layout for which exhibition is arranged. Then this layout it should provide the way to evaluate the finished project as clarity of the message and attractiveness. You should be in a position to communicate your message clearly. Exhibition must have the power to attract. It must be very well lighted with a very good audio system. The message should be short and simple so that it is understood by all visitors. Make the workshop lively and the make the all the labels very legible. Give adequate publicity both in advance and after the exhibitions are over. Evaluate the effectiveness of exhibition by analyzing the attendance inquiries and you have to people you have to keep people who should be addressing all the inquiries which are there. It helps to create a market for the newer product and develop a healthy competition taking place. This is the medical exhibition. This is the picture which you can see how these people are interacting. The only disadvantage is it creates a lot of investment. It cannot lend itself to all topics and cannot be frequently or widely used and it may create a negative impression on audience if it is not handled properly. With this, we are coming to the end of the class today. Thank you very much for your hearing. I welcome you for the next class which will be organized very soon.